I'm here with Case, the designer of the models at Vertigo, and he's going to walk me through some of his grasshopper process, maybe even let me design my own vase to be printed. Yeah, so uh, here you can see an example face, uh, which I wanted to design with you. Let me disable the pattern for now. So this is like the simple face with the bottom, so you can put something in it. Um, you can, for example, decide on how high you want to have it. So I don't know where we go for today. You can go for various heights, for example. Okay, so one of the primary benefits of Grasshopper is this parametric design software. So it's going to be much easier for me to make adjustments to this model, even complex adjustments to this model, uh, without having to know anything about Rhino coding. So the first thing here is the group number slider. And it's the height. This will change the height of the object and we have the width so I'm gonna go with a thinner object um, that's taller I'm gonna make you guys an umbrella stand <laughs> so right now the height is is this in millimeters uh, yeah so it's now 80 centimeters I'm gonna go one meter high for which I would do 20 would be cool. Like uh, 200 uh, millimeters. Something like that. Okay, and we'll go 197 on the on the width, and maybe give it some curvature. So now, if we go in here, you can see the object is completely straight. And then if I come back here, this graph allows me to make adjustments to the base the center so we'll give it some curvature nice i tried to write a formula which uh, which creates uh, nice looking patterns so for each number it's it's, it's different yeah so you haven't tested even all of the no, options? there's like a lot of options. Very cool. And sometimes I feel like uh, funky and uh, I try a weird pattern and then I print it and uh, <laughs> it turns out really fun. It's already quite nice. Yeah, I, I like this one, it's 749. And so here you actually have the coach, which being uh, read by the robot, I'm not sure how familiar the readers are with code, but this is similar to G-code. So here you have your X, Y, and Z separated by commas. Here you have a, a, a rotation in Euler angles. Uh, here I have a config data, that's a, like kind of the starting position of mm -hmm. the robot. Here you have a track position. What's also maybe nice is that here you have uh, the speed, 200 millimeters a second. Uh, with a zone data, this is how much it rounds corners. Uh, a nozzle, we're printing with nozzle tree, on print bed tree, and uh, then we can now start. Uh, Here's where we'll be printing today. You can see the print bed laid out, goes along about 10 meters or so, um, and then you have this display monitoring the system, so we'll get a closer look at that. So on the left you see the different pressures, we measure the pressure when we extrude and uh, in the needle, uh, that's the accelerator pressure, that's the yellow line. Uh, additionally you see here the chamber te the temperature and the nozzle temperature. Um, so during the print what we will see is that the um, material develops strength and increases velocity, therefore it, uh, the pressure increases to about 2-3 bars. This is the pressure required to push it through our nozzle. Additionally, when we add the accelerant, you can see the nozzle temperature going up as uh, the reaction is exothermic. So the temperature will increase. Notice the material dripping out before the concrete comes through. This is the dual component mixture. So this is the accelerant that's going to speed up the curing process. 
process, make the concrete harden much faster, which makes it much more buildable for higher reach. Right now we're going to be printing a model that I designed on the grasshopper setup provided by Vertigo. Notice this overhead pulley system, really good for hose management. Vertigo uses a slightly smaller diameter hose than some of the other companies we visited, so it's more manageable and less volume of material is coming through, but the waste is less on the startup of the printer. So now we're printing the model that I designed earlier on Grasshopper using the program developed by Vertigo and it was pretty simple. We'll see if it's a successful print. This vase has a parametric design that was generated using Grasshopper. I didn't need to do any math or calculations. We just dragged a slider across the screen until it was a pattern I was interested in printing. And now it's coming out fairly nice. Now with an active print in progress behind us, we're going to see how Vertigo is able to load their silo. This makes it much easier than manually loading in uh, sacks of concrete. They're able to pretty much set and forget for around one ton of their material. This makes the printing process much more relaxing than using a 25 kilogram sack system. They're printing a column that's going to be 2.3 meters tall. Let's see if it works. Thanks for watching. If you like what you see, email us at info at vertigo3d.com and subscribe to the channel. So yesterday we printed five elements here at Vertigo and I wanted to demonstrate how this one, the one I designed, and all of them actually, have already hardened to uh, the touch. Somebody who's not experienced might think it's completely cured. Uh, it still takes a typical 28 days to fully cure and reach its maximum strength. But at this point it's quite solid and they can even be moved. So. This object can be lifted, uh, adjusted. They offered for me to take it home with me, but I don't think it fits in my backpack, so I'll leave it here for now. It was meant to be an umbrella stand. It's a little too, uh, too thick and too tall for that, but let's take a look at some of the other prints they did. What impresses me so much about Vertigo is their parametric design. They've experimented with so many different methods of weaving in and out, having <clears throat> layers that are shifting and layer that's straight and just trying to figure out different methods. They actually did this all in Grasshopper. So it's an automated slider program and even Vertigo hasn't tested out all of the design possibilities that come with this program they developed. Here's a great example of Vertigo's design capabilities. With parametric design they create this very varying pattern. It's got kind of wider loops here and then it's smoothed out in this section and they're of varying width the entire way up. So it creates something that's really eye-catching and quite challenging to make in any traditional uh, method. You wouldn't really be able to make a one-off design like this without creating a completely custom form. So for people interested in unique one-off objects, this really offers a premium eye-catching look. Their robot is mounted on this track, which gives them a 30 meter print width. This allows them to do many objects in a row. Yesterday, the five we completed, that's the most printed objects I've seen completed in one day. Granted, they're not the largest objects, but these are quite tall. 
it always impresses me to see a print go really high because the material comes out liquid. So for it to support itself all the way up, it needs a high level of buildability and a fast curing rate. This can be done with accelerants that make the concrete hard and faster, or it can be done with the natural rheology parameters of the concrete so that even when it's liquid, it can support subsequent layers. I also really like the silo mixer pump setup they have here at Vertigo. This large silo allows them to just load in large bags of concrete. Instead of having to constantly worry about loading the silo, they're able to pretty much just sit back and watch the printer go. If everything is going smoothly, everybody on the team is ambiently watching, or maybe just one person for safety. Then it goes from the silo into the mixer where they've attached this bag to prevent any dust from escaping. It was really impressive watching them go through this process because every other company I've seen has had immense amounts of dust floating around um, during this process. Whereas with Vertigo, there was a little bit of dust coming out from there. And because they were loading while they were printing, they didn't have the, the plug capacity to put in the, the other vacuum they usually use to suck up the very little amount of dust that comes out of their silo. So if you see in the video a small amount of dust, generally this would be mitigated because they wouldn't be loading it during the print. One advantage of printing smaller objects is you're able to load this silo with one ton of material and it can last for four or five prints in a row. Most of the mixer pump systems we've seen have been M-Tech, but this one is by my. So the my pump comes quite differently off the shelf. It has a few more compartments that are currently disassembled, but it was fairly simple for them to take the pieces over to the cleaning station and get them all power washed within around 30 minutes. The pattern in these two columns might look very similar, but interestingly enough, they were developed through the parametric design software Vertigo built in Rhino and Grasshopper. This one is the same design as this one, except inverted. And so the interior layers of this one are designed to be the same as the exterior layers of this one. It's a constant debate going on at Vertigo whether the outside of the print or the inside of the print looks prettier. And so they have developed a solution to invert the model, switching what's on the outside and inside. Of course, they have different angles, and so you'll always get something slightly different. But it's really cool that you're able to analyze these things and reassess them after the print. 